This is a story of how I rearranged a pre-existing song into a new version that sounds like this. I'll be covering this process in 16 stages, including writing, collaboration, and production. This is Mario Romano. He's the composer of the song I'll be rearranging. The song's title is And If You Please, and he wrote it recently for one of his daughter's wedding. And if you please. Would you love me forever? The original version is grand and glamorous, as you can hear. I also hear the possibility of something a bit cozier, with a more intimate sound. Before we get started, let's first take a look at the lead sheet. I want to have a look at the structure of the song and then change a few things around. Now in terms of reharmonization, there are a lot of ways to do this, but my strategy is to keep the chords at the most important parts the same, then play around with the transitions. Here's what I mean. At most of the points where the harmony resolves, I will keep the chords in place. Around and between these chords, I will replace what was there with the chords of my liking. Since I want a calmer pace, I'm reducing the number of chord changes, and I'm also choosing chords that transition into one another with very smooth voice leading. Notice the points where the previous chords and my rendition line up. I've also added in some extra bars within some of the phrases. The form of the song is ABABA, and mine is going to be a shorter ABA form. Let's take a moment to play through part of the song in its original form played off of the lead sheet. Notice that it's in 4-4 time. Now here's my version in 3-4 which has more of a lilt. Here's my initial sketch, which I tried to program using virtual instruments. I'm deciding to make this an instrumental track without vocals, and I'm starting first with piano and strings. So I definitely need some help here. This is Julius Meltzer. He's a very talented composer, one of my closest friends, and we've been working together on a number of projects since the last few years. I'm asking him to help me arrange and program this. My pleasure. Basically, I want him to take my ideas and arrange the orchestral bits. Now, this is the start of many back and forths between us, par for the course. Keep in mind that the following drafts are only meant for us to exchange ideas. Nothing will be programmed thoroughly until we settle on an arrangement. Here's the first draft from Julius. How do you fancy this direction? Lovely, but perhaps a bit too dense. Shall we reconsider strings only, perhaps implementing bass? If it's not much of an impertinence to you, and if you please, a gentler texture. Most assuredly possible, I shall return with a revision. As suggested, I added a bass and also gave the viola and cello more parts to play so that the strings in total could represent the chords more properly. I've stretched Nara's lustrous arrangement even further by adding more pauses, portamento, crescendi, decrescendi, and most importantly, fermatas, because especially the ending becomes more brittle if the piece has more space and silences in between to linger in. Otherwise, just a few added octaves at repeated phrases give the piece just a hint of more variety. 
Now here's a new draft from Julius. Splendid. Perhaps we could implement a longer intro? I concur. I believe that music commands real musicians. I shall look into this. Our wonderful friends Laylee Christia, Colin Stokes, and Ben Finlay are now on board, but due to the ongoing pandemic, they're going to have to record their individual parts remotely. And here's what we're sending them. Parts are here. Because there's so much rubato in the track, we're facing a bit of a challenge aligning all of the parts up, as if we were recording together at the same time. The ability to do some editing, splicing, and make adjustments in the piano part, which is remaining virtual, is all going to help us. Also, because all of the musicians recorded with completely different setups, we need to find a way to make the sounds blend well together. Here's my strategy. First, use the same reverb for all of the string player's tracks as we did with the samples. Second, apply varying degrees of it on each track. This can easily be done by sending the signal to the same reverb bus. Third, mix in just a bit from the string section samples to help the string sound more like a unit and not like three different players recorded with three different microphone settings in three different rooms. I have relayed over new material. Sounding exquisite. Here's a list of additional adjustments Julius made to the track as we continued refining it. Feel free to pause the video if you'd like to reference the details. And now, with a little more back and forth and back and forth and back and forth, here is the final arrangement. I mean, I, I get emotional, but I can only say that 
Danke schön. Ich liebe Bitte. dich. You guys took it from my brain. You polished it. You gave it wings, like I said. You turned it into an angel. You returned it to my heart. And then all my heart did was whisper it to my eyes. And I started to cry. That's it. A very special thank you to Julius, Lely, Colin, and Ben, to all of my patrons on Patreon for supporting my work, to Native Instruments for allowing us to use their samples, and to all of you for watching. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next video.